These quirky Dutch wind turbines in tulip shape are said to revolutionize wind power for private users. They are already widely available, easy to install, more aesthetically pleasing than comparable products, completely safe for birds, and supposedly very affordable. How affordable? More on that later, as there are different systems with different peak performances. The smallest system alone is said to achieve peak performances of up to 1000 watts. That's quite a lot. But is this system really worth it for private users? We have analyzed the system from an aerodynamic perspective and established cost-benefit analyses for individuals. So who benefits from the system? The idea behind the wind tulip is quite ingenious. The biggest problem with wind technology is the lack of public acceptance. Wind turbines often have an undeserved bad reputation. They are often referred to as bird choppers or the like in the comments on our channel and are blamed, among other things, for bird deaths. A look at the data shows that 100,000 birds die each year from large wind turbines, but compared to other factors, this number is negligible. However, to seriously address the issue, many in the industry, instead of shifting the problem to others, have taken the matter to heart and sought solutions. One possibility, the so-called vertical axis. Studies have shown that birds can recognize vertically rotating wind turbines much better and thus fly around the obstacle. This system also has a much higher acceptance among the population due to its futuristic appearance. Another advantage is that we don't need wind direction tracking with vertical rotation. No matter which direction the wind comes from, the wind turbine rotates. Vertical axes are mainly divided into Savonius and Darius rotors. They differ mainly in the way the kinetic energy of the wind is converted into mechanical and later electrical energy. The Savonius rotor is probably the most intuitive variant of the vertical axis. We also count the wind tulip among this concept. These systems are so-called drag-type runners. The wind pushes against the blades of the wind tulip setting the system in motion. The system consists of two shovel-shaped, overlapping blades that strongly resemble the outer petals of a tulip. The system can only rotate as fast as the wind moves. In contrast, the typical Darius rotor uses lift force. This allows the system to rotate much faster than a drag-type runner, potentially resulting in a higher efficiency and thus a higher electricity yield. Which concept is better is actually an individual consideration, but it must be clearly stated that in many cases, Darius rotors are economically much more sensible due to the higher electricity yield. The lower costs and simpler design of Savonius rotors can rarely offset this effect, and that's what makes us really skeptical about the wind tulip. In theory, a wind turbine can achieve an efficiency or power coefficient of up to 59.3%. In practice, this value is impossible, but conventional horizontal axes often achieve efficiencies of over 50%. The Savonius rotor is actually considered the most inefficient approach of all rotor concepts. The power coefficient is estimated here at under 28%. But what does the data say? We don't want to jump to conclusions but want to work it out scientifically. Unfortunately, the company is quite hesitant to provide exact performance figures depending on the wind speed. However, to be fair, this could be because the website is still under construction. On the company website, you can currently find a test report regarding the noise level of the wind turbine and a data plot regarding the cut in wind speed. However, this is negligible because although it's nice that the wind tulip starts rotating at a wind speed of 1.2 meters per second, there is hardly any energy in this weak wind. In fact, the energy content of the wind increases cubically with wind speed. This means that if the wind speed doubles, the energy content increases by a factor of eight. For example, the vertical wind turbines from the company Icewind deliver almost 200 kilowatt hours per year at an average wind speed of 4.5 meters per second, but at double the wind speed of 9 meters per second, they already deliver 700 to 800 core per year. We only find a performance curve on the purchase page of a single product from the company. As expected, 
you can at least see a clear cubic increase here. But the curve is generally really, really flat. This means that really high wind speeds are necessary for acceptable electricity yields. To achieve just about 200 W of power, the wind has to blow at a speed of almost 22.3 meters per second. These are wind speeds that are rarely reached, with a typical wind speed of 4 meters per second, which is really very, very optimistic for many places, you would gain so ridiculously little electricity that you can't even read the value from this function. We would estimate the value at 5 to 30 watts. The company writes that the system is sufficient for charging mobile phones in emergencies or perhaps for operating a heating blanket, but you could also simply buy a power bank for that. We also find the wind speed map embedded on the website strange, suggesting that there is enough wind for small wind turbines everywhere in the world. Such maps are not sufficient at all for checking the wind speed and for an economic forecast. What is important is a proper wind speed measurement and site inspection, if necessary by competent experts. In cities, you will never find enough laminar wind currents that are wind currents running parallel to the ground. For small wind power, obstacles such as buildings, trees, etc. create turbulence bubbles that can extend over several tens to hundreds of meters. In addition, the roof of a house is a really unsuitable location. Even in the countryside with a clear view of the main wind direction, there is a decent flow break. A sloping roof can even make this effect locally much worse. There are exceptions and yes, we will also introduce these special wind turbines on this channel. So it's worth subscribing so you don't miss these videos. But the media reports about the wind tulip, which often praise it as a revolution in small wind power, are, in our estimation, far too optimistic and, according to our forecast, not really sustainable. A look at the shop also makes it clear what the wind tulip should actually be understood as. The way we see it, the focus is on aesthetics. There are various special designs with partially customizable decorations. The wind turbine is more of a designer product. And for that, it's actually pretty cool. Especially companies that have their logo printed on it will certainly enjoy it. For private users, however, it will probably only be profitable in a few cases. But wait, there are also systems that can really be worthwhile. Small wind power can work. A system that delivers really decent electricity yields and shines with really high efficiency and performance is the so-called Borne wind turbine. We are planning to make a detailed video about the system in the future and want to explain how exactly the system can really be worthwhile for private users. If you want to see more exciting news on sustainable energy, click on the displayed video. Also, feel free to subscribe to this channel to receive updates and notifications about new videos. See you next time.